Hey gang, so I was cutting with my cold steel air light, a knife I bought about a month ago and carried somewhat regularly, a little bit intermittently with the um, Benchmade M4 bailout. But as I was cutting, it started to feel a little bit dull, so I thought, yes, it is time now. And here we are, a good measure of when it may be time to review the knife, unless it's a knife made of the worst steel ever, which goes dull on the first day. This is not, however, made of the worst steel ever. This is a competitively priced, mid to low cost, um, everyday carry type knife that really could be for anyone. It's a little bit generic, a very safe cold steel choice, a lot safer than many other cold steel knives. We're gonna go into this blade, I've done some testing, I've done some use, and I've overall had a pretty satisfying time with the cold steel air light. I'll tell you what's good about it, uh, what's not so good about it, things you might need to know, and overall we should have a great day. So let's get into it. Let's show it next to some other knives so you figure out how large it is. With the Half Breed Blades Large Bush Folder, Quite a large knife. The Cold Steel SR1 Light. That's a chonky boy. It's a Spyderco K390 Delica. And for thickness, a little bit thicker. There you go, with a buck 110. Almost the same size, just a little bit shorter. And the Spyderco M4 Military. Should be back to you soon, Gabe. So as you can see, it's a paramilitary size knife. Definitely the mid-sized to uh, maybe mid to large EDC folding blade. Uh, it's a very slim package. It's a very light package overall, so it doesn't have a huge uh, pocket imprint. Uh, that being said, it isn't the slimmest knife in the world. It goes a little bit wider this way than I generally prefer. I like the real slim blades, but that's just me. But overall, a pretty low impact everyday carry choice in terms of size and weight. The blade you get on this one is a Sabre Ground AUS-10 blade. AUS-10, an upgrade, I believe, by Hitachi not that Hitachi, by Hitachi of the AUS-8 steel, making for what I've always found is sort of VG-10 to BD-1 level of performance, whereas AUS-8 was more of a um, 8CR13 MOV or, or 440C kind of analog steel, depending on the 440C, I suppose. So definite improvement. Um, I like it about as much as I like uh, 14C28N, a really nice uh, clean steel in itself that uh, is very tough and holds a good edge. And this kind of feels, yeah, along those lines. Not gonna hold an edge forever, it's still a, a relatively budget steel choice, but it's stain, stain resistant to, uh, you know, as much as your daily use is gonna require. And yeah, pretty easy to sharpen, holds an edge. Nothing too bad to say about the blade and the blade steel. Um, the Sabre Grind is on a relatively thin blade. It could be thinner, certainly not Delica thin, but it's a stout sort of cold steel blade choice, going well with the, the thickness of the triad lock you can see there. So as you saw at the start of the video, that was me testing the triad lock. Um, you can see other videos on triad lock strength. It is probably the strongest folding knife lock uh, that's a one in all piece. So Extremis uh, CRKT, uh, Landscape, I believe, makes some knives where you have to put a uh, extrema ratio, that is extrema, where you have to put a pin through a hole. Those might be a little bit stronger than this, but for an all-in-one design, it's probably about as strong as you can get. And the good thing about cold steel lately is their triad locks are no longer particularly creaky and, uh, and walk and talky. You can flip most of them open with your thumb, which is a, a bit of an improvement on older cold steels, which were always a little bit too eh, 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 eh. So they've done a really good job, I think, just polishing their surfaces, using good washes and things like that. So really are going strength to strength, strength to strength with the uh, Demco Triad Lock. In terms of your handle, this is the only part the knife really probably falls down for me. It's a very thin handle, and it's something that you probably will get used to, and really, it's probably just gonna be your EDC knife using it for occasional tasks. But the times I have put it to work for, you know, a 20 minute period cutting something repetitively, I've noticed that the thinness, and particularly the channel that the blade fits into, whoop, is a little bit sharp. So you do get kind of a gouge across these fingers here. 
it's nothing terrible. It's a folding knife. Most folding knives have this issue, um, unless it's like a um, really rubberized kind of built up round handle. Most thinner folding knives are gonna have this problem. And I guess they've made a choice to make a thin G10 handled pocket knife. If it was really bothering me, I suppose I could get a, a piece of sandpaper and knock those edges down just a little bit, but not bothering that much. It's just something I thought I would tell you guys as prospective buyers of this knife. Cost-wise, this is about a $100 knife in Australia. I think I paid about 110. I think in America, these are about 50 bucks US. We always pay a bit of a, a transport levy in Australia as well as a, probably an extra tax or something. So it doesn't quite translate to the sort of $80 it should be if the money was just swapped conversion rate wise. Uh, so to get it from a legitimate retailer, it's gonna be about 100, 110 bucks, which still I think that's, um, it's less than Spyderco Delica money these days, and you probably get more knife here than you get on a basic Spyderco Delica. You get a roughly competitive uh, steel choice. You get a slightly longer, stronger blade. Um, overall, it's a pretty good deal still, if you ask me. So Cold Steel has recently sold uh, from Lynn Thompson to more of one of those kind of conglomerate groups. They currently seem to be doing okay. They've obviously been very receptive to the people that like the company, and they've done a pretty intelligent choice by getting a fellow YouTuber, Jimmy Slash, to do a lot of their kind of official channel stuff now. So very clever move. Um, Jimmy Slash is a very well-regarded fellow. So um, definitely shows that the new management, are, at least for this first part of the company's new history, probably going to listen to the consumers and listen to the fans. Uh, I am probably a reasonable Cold Steel fan. I always found uh, the traditional Cold Steel marketing that we all know and love. Good in that kind of can't look away, um, 90 day fiance, uh, Tiger King kind of way, like sort of, but it was part of the company's charm. So I'm, I'm very much hoping they keep that alive in some respects. Um, so we'll see how they go. Um, and I mean, the main worry that everyone has is they're gonna go and do what uh, happened to say, Shrade, another kind of well-liked community, cost-efficient brand after they got sold and just become like a complete zombie of what they used to be. So fingers crossed that doesn't happen. It certainly doesn't look like it's happening just yet. So overall, I've not really, I've been waiting to judge because and even now it may still be too soon to judge, but initial outlooks are looking pretty much business as usual, which for a unique company like Cold Steel is definitely what I like to see. But overall, back to the Airlight, it's definitely not a crazy Cold Steel. This is more in line with like the American Lawman, Recon One, that kind of line of pretty normal EDC knives. It's still got the standard cold steel issue of the pocket clip is just too tight um, and it, you have to swap it over with an entirely different pocket clip because it doesn't line up on either side. So it comes with a second pocket clip, which I always just found a bit weird um, rather than just lining up these dots and having the same one, you can just swap over. But anyway, that's nothing major. Uh, one last thing I'm gonna do uh, is I'm gonna put an edge back on this AUS 10 knife with a pretty basic hand tool sharpener. I'm using a DMT die fold. And then we'll show you that it's a good steal for just being able to resharpen quickly and get a good edge back on it. I think that's something that a lot of people like to see and also see that me and my sharpening technique isn't great, but I'll be able to get a paper slicing edge back on this guy. So let's do that, wind up the video, and I hope you've all enjoyed this quick yet positive look at the Cold Steel Airlight. See you in the next video, friends. Bye-bye. Can't get much simpler than that, eh? Uh, so previously, let's see how we're doing now. Whammy. 
So I'd just like to show you, I know I've got all these fancy sharpening systems, Tormex and KMEs, but um, lately I'm more interested in showing you that knives can be surface, uh, serviced just with very basic tools to get as good an edge as you'd ever actually need. So something cool to show you to round out the video. See you in the next one. Goodbye.